It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon and welcome to today's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. I am Austin Peterson, uh, as always, joined by my co-host Landon Mance. And today we're happy to have on the show Scott Huff, CEO of eFolio, coming to us from the Cleveland, Akron area. Scott, thanks for being here. Thank you guys for the invite. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're excited to have you here and uh, we're even more excited that we won't be spending our winter in Cleveland this year. Go ahead and rub it in now while it's still warm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure you've had a nice summer, uh, albeit COVID uh, has, I'm sure, put a damper on a few things that you may have had going from a business standpoint as well as a personal standpoint. But uh, I'll I'll bet the summers there are much nicer than they are in Las Vegas or Phoenix. They are a little bit cooler, I would tell you that. So, uh, you know what? Lake life is good in the summer. Uh, boating and, uh, and, and enjoying the water is, uh, is a nice thing. And uh, so I get to appreciate that while you guys are in the desert. <laughs> yeah. Well, Landon and I have a secret that uh, we both have ties to Southern California. So we actually spend a, a good amount of time in Southern California escaping the heat. I, I just got back last night from Oceanside. We were there for a week for fall break and living the uh, RV life at the, at the beach campground just across the street from, uh, from Oceanside's beach. So we were right. just, just about a mile south of the harbor. So, or the, uh, the, yeah, the Marina, Oceanside Harbor. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. very nice. I'm, I, I love Southern California. You can't beat it. So uh, it's yeah. good. And the RV life is the way to go, right? It's uh, you can get around and can come right back whenever you need to. Yeah, we've, we've been happy with the decision, actually. We've got uh, a couple of places where we can keep it long term and, and we'll spend some time there, but we're not tied to one spot the way that you would be with a second home somewhere. So we're, we're excited about it. Uh, we've only had it about six months, but it's been a great six months for us. No airplane delays on the, uh, no, on the flight? Yeah. Not, none at all. We do run into some traffic, of course, but we try to plan around that. Uh, it's good stuff. I'm glad you guys can get out and enjoy your family during this time. Yeah. So Scott, you know, what, one of the things that we like to do before we jump into the business side of things is, is really just have you tell us about, your, about yourself personally, whether there's family life there, you know, kind of what led you to where you are today. So give us kind of a, a history of what brought you to where you are today, if you don't mind. It's not, it's not too exciting, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, so like you gentlemen there, um, I actually took my uh, Series 7 license exam on September 1st, 2001. So it was a great entry into this business. Uh, 10 days later, uh, you, we all know what happened. But along the way, um, you know, I had uh, tried to diversify my portfolio or diversify my resume, as, as I would say. Um, held stints with the U.S. Department of Labor as an independent fiduciary. Uh, also served um, as the investment chairman of a uh, $16 billion pension fund. And somewhere along the way, I had a bad idea when I woke up from a nightmare and started Yuri Folio. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I live here with my wife and two children, uh, seven and almost, uh, well, actually now seven and 10 year old and uh, had a full scholarship in college for men's tennis at the University of Akron. So uh, tennis has been a very big staple of my life, led to a lot of things. As a matter of fact, it actually led to me getting into this business and still active today. Um, so uh, yeah, and, and today I am still an RIA but my primary role is as the CEO of a technology company uh, that is dedicated to estate and legacy planning. And we service um, our clients, our financial advisors, certified financial planners and estate planning attorneys. Yeah. That's how I got here. Awesome. So I guess I should start with go zips, right? Go zips. You are right. Uh, You know, it's funny when they had all these, uh, this talk about changing the mascot names. um, I said, well, can we volunteer changing our mascot name? Because we would (laughs) certainly love to do that. So, (laughs) but uh, it's, it's, it's offensive to the whole university. So we'd, we'd like to change it to something a little bit more, uh, more aggressive. Let's just say that, but uh, no, no, we love Akron. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. But no, I think, I think it's a great area of the country. I've spent a, a decent amount of time in, in Ohio, both southern and northern, uh, over the over my career. I actually was a was a wholesaler for the for annuities at Pacific Life, and the state of Ohio was my territory. <laughs> so I, I've spent a fair amount of time there, and and love the state of Ohio. I'm not a huge fan of Cincinnati. Sorry for those who are listening from Cincinnati, but uh, the rest of the state I really enjoy. It is a nice place. It's, it's, it's the Midwestern feel, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the, it's the Indiana, the Ohio's, the Midwestern feel and uh, life is uh, inexpensive, but uh, you know, challenging, you know, we deal with the seasons, but uh, it's good here. I'm, I'm proud to be born and raised here. I wouldn't yeah. want to pick it any other way. Yeah. Very cool. Well, uh, you know, you kind of went through your background a little bit and, and you've had a fair amount of background on the corporate side, right? So, I mean, I, I got licensed a year and a half before you, so you got licensed right before 9-11, which obviously we, we saw some issues there, but I had the same experience because I started right around the dot-com, dot-com bubble and the hanging chad, right? And Landon, yeah. I, I had tried to have this conversation with Landon the other day, and he'd never heard of a hanging chat, had no idea what that was. And so that gives you an idea of how much older I am than, than Landon. But, uh, you know, so it, I don't know that there's ever a perfect time to start in this business, right? And so it, it'll be interesting to, to learn a little bit more about your business here and then managing the pension fund and so forth. But, you know, you had kind of all this corporate and financial background. And then all of a sudden you thought, like you said, you woke up from a bad dream and you said, Oh, I think I'm going to start this, uh, this technology firm. So, you know, give us, give us some ideas on, on what it's really like to create a a pure startup specifically now in, uh, in this pandemic. Yeah. I remember the conversation very vividly with my wife. So uh, I said, Hey honey, I'm, I'm going to start a technology. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to write a software program. And she said, you're not going to write like Tinder or Bumble, are you? And I said, no, 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 I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go completely opposite. I'm going to go death and dying. So uh, she goes, Oh, okay. Well, she goes, do whatever you want to do then. No. So, um, but, uh, but you know, I never, you know, when there's always been a difference to me, I think in when you start a business that has a foundation. So, let's say you're, you know, you want to sell tires, right? And there are people that have done that before, or, or you want to start an auto mechanic shop or, or a restaurant. There are people that have paved the way for you, people that you can learn from and look, look, look at. But when you look at a pure estate planning technology, there are literally nobody who is, they've done bits and pieces of it. You might find something in an e-money or a money guide pro, but when they focused on that pure aspect, there's never been, there's never been anybody who's done it. So for me, it was not only a a chance, but I also had to really, um, you know, study and understand the industry and learn a lot more because I couldn't look at somebody else's, what they had done before to learn from them. Um, You know, and I think that when you look at guys like, you know, Microsoft or, or Apple or these guys, these innovators that don't have anybody who's paved the way, they've paved the way for others. It's certainly, you know, makes it uh, a, a little bit more challenging. Um, even when you talk about, it's, it's very hard to start a financial planning business. Um, you know, you have to grind out new clients, but there are people that have done it and can tell you the ways that they've been successful, but there's nobody can say, hey, listen, this is how you do an estate planning software. This is what made me a, a billion bucks. You're like, nope, you're on your own, figure it out. And, and so that was one of the biggest challenges is just trying to figure it out. Yeah, so that's that's interesting to me. It actually brings up a question as to what really prompted you to say, "Gosh, you know, estate planning is is the next place to to digitize." For example, right? Was it something in your in your practice, financial planning wise, where you thought, "Gosh, you know, this is this is so difficult to get done," or my clients don't have it done, or my clients don't want to deal with an attorney, you know, face to face to get all this done? I mean, was there something specific that kind of led you to say, "This is." this is the digitizing, you know, aspect that I'm going for. Yeah. Um, you know, my father passed away. That was one thing. Um, so, you know, trying to be able to just to manage his estate with everything that was in it that we knew and had all the I's dotted and the T's crossed and the difficulties we still faced. But um, I had lost one of my largest clients in my book, um, you know, and so that was a, that was a wake up call. You, everybody takes for granted, um, you know, their cl- or takes for granted that their clients will live forever in their book and don't prepare for somebody passing away. But, um, you know, and, and I know you guys can appreciate this, but uh, the moment uh, a pretty heavy part of your book passes away and you haven't dotted your I's and crossed your T's on your estate planning, 
you can be backpedaling to keep those assets from um, in, within your book. And your, your book is only as strong, right, as the, the, the assets and the clients that you have. So I realized that that was a, a thing that, you know, most financial advisors focused on the financial planning aspects and managing the assets and, and doing those things. But we really didn't focus heavily on estate planning. We more or less just gave that to an attorney to, to, to do or work with an attorney. And the reality was, is that there was a statistic says that, uh, that, you know, 90% of the assets flow outside of an advisor's book um, once somebody dies. And that had hit me a couple times. And so I figured there's got to be a better way to secure those assets to grab the next generation of wealth and it's a technology era. So let's just build some technology around it and, and see what we can do. And we've done a great job. Um, you know, our clients today include, you know, Fidelity, Vanguard, financial engines, some of the largest institutions you'll see uh, are our clients because they believe estate planning is important for a financial advisor. Hey, Scott. Yeah. Uh, just before we uh, get into a little bit more about the inner workings of, of the business and, you know, what you have going on there, um, when we talk about estate planning, you know, uh, most people think, oh, you know, a, a will, a trust, you know, maybe it's a couple other documents, but, um, talk to us about, um, your software and, and what it, what it does exactly and, um, and how it's utilized. It sounds like it's utilized through attorneys or advisors or people that are serving the masses. But just talk to us a little bit of, you know, about what, what is, what is estate planning according to you guys and what, what are you doing and what are you offering through the software? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, you know, the software covers a wide variety of, of what um, people do in their, in, in the practice, right? From whether it be an, an advisor to an attorney, to a trust department, the many things, the many facets of what their days look like in estate planning, whether it be engaging people or prospecting to the actual planning process, to helping people understand, to making sure that assets are titled and funding, all of those aspects of estate planning, our software facilitates in one way or another. But when you get into the value proposition of what we provide, what we provide is for financial advisors is we provide a technology that allows them to be the quarterback of their client's estate plan or their client's lives planning beyond their lifetime. That's what our software facilitates. For the end client, the person that's the client of the advisor, the software helps them understand what's going on when they plan beyond their lifetime. It also helps them manage their estate and all the items in it and all the people that are tied to it so that everything seamlessly can move so that people can grieve and move on and move on with their, uh, you know, with their lives and, and be able to focus on the wonderful things that they've had with that family member and less about the stuff of, you know, with how to transfer a car title or, uh, or a house. So we facilitate both sides of that, um, that, that pendulum for, for, um, for clients and for the advisors. Yeah, that's, that's great. I, I know, I'm sure the three of us probably can all relate as we, you know, I've had many clients pass away throughout my, you know, short 10 or 11 year career, as I'm sure you guys have had, the same thing happen. And a lot of times, you know, somebody passes away. Sometimes it's unexpected. Sometimes it might be um, a little bit more anticipated, but the end result is pretty typical, right? So someone passes away and the surviving spouse is scrambling, right? They're scrambling to find life insurance and accounts and bank and this, and, you know, and, and so, Sounds like what you're doing is you're 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 bringing some um, some ease and some continuity, you know, to the to this process, so that you know when someone does kind of pass away, that like you said, you can they can focus more on um, the positive things and, and a little bit less on the things that might be a little bit more negatively viewed. Is that kind of a fair statement? That's a fair statement. You know, when you think about it from a spouse, spousal standpoint, yes. The, you know, you just lost your husband or your wife. The last thing you want to think about is I got to get some money out of the bank, right? You're, 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 you just lost the person you've been with forever. Um, and you can think about it in your own terms. Uh, it's on people's minds during COVID, right? It, it's, it's definitely, you don't know if you're going to the hospital and it might be the last time you see somebody. The same thing when you walk out that door. We never know, right? So, 
you think about it when you lose a spouse and the mindset of a person, right? But then think about it as the children are there, you have siblings and they lost both of their parents. And now a lot of times, and I, I say this with all, with all due respect, a lot of the parents in the older times don't like to talk about finances to their kids. They were really don't want to tell them what they had and so forth, if they were really wealthy or if they were poor. They don't, they don't really want to disclose that. So now the kids are really left holding the bag next generation. So if they can at least give them a system so when they do pass on, the kids can, can, can get an idea of how to move things around and what they are, it makes the process a lot easier. You know, and our software facilitates one thing that is always left behind in this whole process. And in, in, I, I don't know if you have children or kids, but for me, it's all of the times that I built the memories and the moments and the things that I'm going to do when I go home tonight. That's really what's important to me. You know, my kids will be taken care of, but all those memories, our software actually facilitates what we call legacy planning, being able to tell people how, you know, the messages that you wanted to leave to them, showing them the stories that they wanted to see and being able to look back and, and remember you, me the way that I want to be remembered, not, you know, laying on wherever I am, but how we were today. And so the software brings into the one aspect that a lot of people forget about is the, the fact that how do you want to be remembered, the legacy, the legacy that you're living on this and the story that you want to tell your kids. How many times have Landon and Austin thought back, God, if I knew, I know what I know now, if I knew that when I was eight or nine years old, think about how far ahead I'd be. Don't you want to pass those, those things on to your kids and, and that? So we help facilitate more than the documents and what's flowing. We want to facilitate your legacy. Yeah, I, I love that. And I want, I, want to, I want to circle back. I want to ask you about, so don't let me forget, I want to know <laughs> how you do that. But before, I, before you talk, speak to that, um, you mentioned something that uh, I'd like to get your, your thoughts on real quick. You said uh, the older generation, um, they're a little bit more secretive with their, you know, we'll call it their wealth. So, and, and I find that to be uh, very accurate. You know, I have a lot of clients that are in their 60s, 70s, even into their 80s. And, you know, they've got parents that are still alive in their 80s, you know, late 90s. And I, I, that, that seemed to be a pretty common theme is that they, they have an idea of what they're going to inherit, but they really don't know. So in your experience, why is it important for an older generation to communicate to a younger generation, you know, what they may be getting in the form of, of assets. Yeah. Um, you know, communication of those assets can lead to a lot of things, right? So uh, let's take, for instance, my, my family, right? You know, I grew up in a, a very middle-class family. My father worked for the postal service. My mom didn't work. You know, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, you know, my brother and sister weren't able to go to college. They just went to high school and went to work, right? And so the assets that my parents built along the way were going to help us be able to provide for our children, for college, or for a home, or for whatever that was. And so it just built up the next generation and the next generation. Everything that you've built in your lifetime is only going to make your generation um, better. Um, and so you want to reflect those values to your children, to those people that are going to inherit your wealth on the purpose of that wealth. You know, but the purpose of my wealth when I transfer it isn't to go to on a, on a $250,000 uh, $250, yacht cruise in the, you know, in the middle of Fort Lauderdale. It's to build a business, to build, um, you know, college or to build a savings for whatever that would be so that you can live your life better than what I, how I had it and hopefully the next generation. And that's really what that comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Okay, so let's tie that back into how your software helps to facilitate that more smoothly through, you know, what you're, what you're referring to as legacy planning. Yeah, so the, the things that we do well um, is we take a, an industry that, uh, for what it's worth, is very numbers and text-based, right? binder a document, it's very legal document, very text-based. We turn that into visuals so that people can see and understand and, and see their family members and their pictures. We bring their, you can actually put your pictures on their illustration pieces. We help them visualize how this all plays out so that they don't have to worry about reading a binder of documents. That's the understanding level that we bring to the table. But on the other end, our software has genealogy trees, 
family albums where you can load videos and stories and build those stories based on the memories and the time frames that those came in. And you can export those videos to funerals. You can put them in albums. So you can take all of those components of your legacy and share those with other family members. And they're preserved forever. Our software doesn't get wet, doesn't get burned, doesn't get, paper doesn't get crimpled. It's there forever. And if you think about a fire, the one thing that you can't replace in a fire is life and typically pictures. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. And as, as a, a man who's married to a professional genealogist um, <laughs> that has, you know, a 91-year-old father and an 86-year-old mother, um, and we've had these conversations, but even then they're still not giving details, right, around what their actual wealth is. Um, but they have gone through a little bit of what their expectations are and how they'd like to see things uh, play out, right? And I've had conversations with them about delineating certain things to maintain harmony afterwards, because my wife is the youngest of seven children. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a completely uh, foreign conversation to too many people, but the reality is that it, it really is about the legacy. The documents are the documents, right? And they're yeah. important. And we understand as financial planners, why they're important to have those in place and to have them you know, written the, the way that they should be to ultimately carry out what your wishes are. But it, it's the legacy that, that really matters to the person who's putting these documents together, right? And so it sounds to me like, and, and, and I'll have to take a look closer at the software, but it sounds to me like maybe there are even some prompts in there to say, you know, how do you feel about this? And then they can either write it out or maybe even record a video that gets uploaded there so that, so that we, as the younger generation, sees exactly what our parents would like to convey to us. And, and many of them, it's not even just about the numbers, but they're not comfortable having an emotional conversation with their kids or thinking about their own demise or, you know, all those sorts of things. And so it gives them an opportunity in a safe space to convey to their kids what they'd like to convey. And I think that that's a pretty powerful concept. It is a very powerful concept. It's a powerful concept in what you do for a living because you want to touch your client a certain way. You don't want to make it about a portfolio. You want to make it about a relationship and, and, and connecting and relating to them. You know, um, with all due respect, I have a lot of friends that have financial planning softwares, um, but, you know, those are numbers. What we do is we, we, we hit you in the chest. Um, you know, we make it emotional and it goes a long way. Um, and, it, and it's unfortunate that a lot of advisors, you know, don't see the value necessarily in bringing that to their clients um, as much as I would like to see them do that. But I think, we're, I think we're changing the mindset. I think our software is changing the mindset and making it scalable and easier. And so, um, you know, it's just a matter of time before, uh, before we can become a household name in the advisory practice. And that's why that's, that was my, my whole thing in this, in this venture from the beginning was to make it so that the advisors could have a way to really, really deeply connect with their clients um, on more than just a, uh, Hey, your portfolio is doing well every month. We're reaching your goals. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, and the business owners, I mean, think about business owners, succession planning, all of those things that, uh, that these guys that are servicing, you know, in yourself, servicing business owners, how valuable that next generation, you know, um, of wealth goes, um, especially when you're building your business and all your business is tied up, yeah, um, you know, and, and so you move it to a next generation. Um, you know, it's really important the way you succeed when that succession plan goes. Yeah. Well, and I think as advisors, you know, you, you said a few things that are commonplace for Landon and I, but I don't think that they're commonplace for most financial planners or advisors in that, you know, you talk about putting the advisor as the quarterback of the team. That's, that's terminology that Landon and I use every single day with our clients. And quite honestly, we get pushback sometimes from an estate planning attorney who believes that they should be the quarterback of the team. Or we get pushback from them when we say, this is what we need the documents to say. And the, you know, the pushback is their ego saying, well, I'll decide what the documents should say and what's appropriate for the client. And, and they're just missing the boat, right? I mean, the reality is that there's a tax, there's a legal, you know, there's an accounting perspective, there's an invest, you know, we're looking at investments, all these, all these things that we have to look at. If you're truly doing the right job for your clients, you're looking at all aspects of their lives. 
and you're, you're pulling in these experts because we're not attorneys, Landon and I, neither one of us are, but we're, we're looking at all of these aspects of their lives. We have to tie them together and there has to be one quarterback who's driving and who is that catalyst for getting things done. Right. So we know where we play. We know where we don't play, but we've got to pull in in those experts. And quite honestly, it's not easy all the time to get those experts to work well with us. And something like this may make it easier for us to either work directly with our clients or with an estate planning attorney alongside your port or your uh, software. Yeah. In theory, that's uh, that's that's the correct analogy. So. When you are looking for that job, you're hired because you basically sold my software for this. <laughs> you have the, uh, you have it. So, um, but no, you're you're right, and uh, and you know I can't speak from the other side of the fence because I also am not an attorney. We have a lot of wonderful attorney users, but the software is designed to bring everybody together for the good of the client. Because if you if you all work together, you you plan better together for the client. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, go Scott, ahead. Man. Yeah, just one 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 quick question, Scott. And then we'll uh, we'll take a, a quick break here. Um, so I just kind of lost my train of thought. Um, so the the software it, it kind of it kind of acts as a as a a planning tool, kind of an, an, an aggregator of of someone's assets and, and values and, and memories and things like that. But just to be clear, you cannot draft or execute legal documents through the software. Is that correct? No, you can actually go all the way to the end zone with our software. Um, however, they are not delivered. They are only delivered by attorneys. So if you want a document delivered to your client, you would have to engage either your attorney or our attorney uh, and then either use one of our integrated drafting solutions or you could use theirs and have documents delivered through the platform to you for your client. Interesting. I'd, I'd like to, um, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like you to expand upon that. I'd like to learn a little bit more about what that looks like, but um, if we can just, just pause for a moment, uh, Scott, sure. and we're going to um, hear from one of our sponsors real quick. Yeah. Whether you're an established local company or a brand new startup, you can count on GBS to be part of your family. We're not just any benefits consulting firm, we're GBS. We have nearly 30 years of experience in group benefits, a strong sense of purpose, and it shows. GBS, believe in something better. GBSbenefits.com. All right, Tycoons, welcome back. We're here with Scott Huff with Your eFolio coming to us live from Akron, Ohio. Scott, again, I think the first half of the show has been phenomenal, and I'm going to let Landon expound upon the, the questions he has there, because I, I do think that it's interesting for us to see the way that this software works and, and how we could, we could benefit from it, but also how our clients could benefit from it. Yeah, um, and, and ironically, we just built a, a cons, um, an Organize Your Estate um, module for the consumer, so advisors can deliver it for free. We don't charge for it. It's a value add that you can use with any of your clients or prospects, and it just helps them organize their estate. They can print it out and give it to their loved ones or put it in a safe. Um, so we, we, have, uh, we have gone that far as well. But uh, So feel free to anybody who needs to use it, let, let Austin or, or Landon know, and they'll get you, get you a way to organize your, uh, your, your estate. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for that, Scott. So Talk to us. Talk to us just for a minute because I, I'm I'm intrigued now because I, I didn't realize that you could go this far with the software. So um, maybe just just spend a minute and kind of you know walk us down the pathway you know from from start to finish and and talk to us a little bit more about um, when you get to the finish line as opposed to having to take what you've done and just go execute with an attorney on, on, you know, left to your own devices, you guys will actually assist in, in executing there. So can you kind of just lead us up to that point and then sure. kind of talk through what that looks like with you guys? Yeah. So, um, you know, we give you all the questions to ask. We put them all in a, in a, in a, in a, in a workflow. So you would go through, you know, one through, seven and then you get to the point where you've got all your questions asked all your your things formulated 
And then what we call is you develop an actual plan with the client. So there is a, there is a actual feature in our software called the plan. Um, I, I model that off of my friend, Michael Kitsis, uh, because he always complained about uh, financial planning software, never gave it, a, never gave you a plan. So I, I built a plan module just, just because he said it. Um, but anyway, uh, um, so there's a module in our software says the plan and that plan might be changing beneficiary designations. It might be building a special needs trust. It might be funding a trust, uh, you know, with different accounts, whatever that plan is that that client needs to execute, you would go in our software and complete that written plan. And then you deliver a copy of the plan to the client, right? Through the software, through that. And then once you guys agree that your plan is, is complete, you have one of two options. You can um, make um, your attorney an authorized user of the software, and then you can send that data in your plan to that that, that attorney. And then they would obviously review that, get the client engagement letter signed and, and prepare your documents, right? Um, however, we have a collaboration program, which all of our attorneys are vetted. They participate in this plan and they've used our software and know how to work through it. So when you send them, there's a button on our software that says, would you like to speak to an attorney? And you click the button. Yes. It gives you an idea of the attorneys in your area. It tells you what prices they charge. Um, it's not free. It's not legal zoom. Um, so it's, it, there isn't a standard charge. And when you hit that button, they become, they get the information um, that you're transmitting and they will build through our integrated systems, the documents that would correspond with your plan if the documents are needed. Right. And they would deliver those through our task manager right to you and have the clients sign and, and deliver the documents. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, and that, think, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and our goal in that is to bring the two of you together so that our attorneys know to say, okay, hey, Landon, by the way, this, this client might be lacking a little bit of insurance or this client might, um, you know, might be a candidate for an irrevocable trust that needs to be managed for long-term care. So the attorneys are there to not give referrals, but to give you opportunities that you may or may not have recognized in the client's estate plan. And that's how you guys work together is we, we bring opportunities. We also have an estate analyzer tool, which will actually analyze the entire estate and will tell you opportunities that exist within that client's estate plan. Yeah, I love that. I, I you know, I, I guess I didn't realize that it was so robust. So um, yeah, just, Many, many kudos. This, uh, the, the, di the deeper that we dive into this, the, the cooler and uh, more useful and valuable that this seems to become. So let's shift gears a little bit yeah. um, and talk about the pandemic at hand. And um, maybe this has created some new, you know, unique opportunities for your business, but just kind of talk to us a little bit about how this has, you know, affected your business and, and maybe some things that you've had to do to pivot to uh, keep things moving along. Yeah. Um, I call it evolution, but uh, you know, when the pandemic hit um, the one fortunate thing for us was, is that um, estate planning was on a lot of people's minds, right? So, you know, when you went into a hospital, you couldn't bring somebody with you. So you had to, um, you had to think about, you know, do I have, do I, do they know what they need to know before something happens to me? Right. And you, and, and while, you know, each piece of person has their philosophies on the pandemic, the reality is we both, we don't know how our bodies are going to react if we catch it. Right. We don't know if we're going to catch it or that. So, so there's always that chance. So for the pandemic, it helped us because estate planning, you know, became a forethought or updating documents um, of those people. But as a business, you know, we looked at it a different way. You know, one of the things was that we had to look at is, okay, um, you know, people aren't going to be contacted. So we have to look at our marketing plans and our, and our execute different marketing strategies. We no longer can get to the conferences. We can no longer get to the face-to-face -face advisors that we need to contact with. Our sales staff is now behind the desk, even working remote. So we had to revisit our marketing plan. You know, we had to revisit our business model to make us more competitive, to make us more sticky in the marketplace. So although Landon, I thank you for the, the compliments that you gave us on our platform. I only explained about 30% of what we do. There's about another 70% more of, of things that we do in our platform to make us more competitive. Um, so I, you know, when the pandemic hit, I think it forced all small businesses, mine and yours included, to look at a way to make us sustainable, um, and, and, and change the way we market, 
to change the way we do business and really re go back and reanalyze our business plan. And I, I, I hope most businesses went back and reanalyzed their business plan, including restaurants, including barbershops. You know, it was the prudent thing to do as a business owner is to say, okay, you know what? I've been facing some different challenges. I need to really look at my business plan, my marketing plan, you know, my sales strategy. What do I got to do to survive? Yeah, and I think that I think the pandemic actually gives us an extreme example of the importance of looking at and revising business plans and marketing plans. But but the reality is, and I'm a big proponent of having a one-page business plan and a one-page marketing plan that's a living document and that's being updated on an ongoing basis, regardless of what's going on around you, right? Because we write down a plan that makes sense given on any given day, but something even small can change that, right? And so I, I think that, you know, this is an extreme example. And yes, we may need to, to truly pivot and change things completely. You know, off air, we were talking about a company that, that you were going to do a conference for, or you did a conference for in, in February that has had to completely change their model from in-person seminars to online webinars as a way to try to survive this right? Yeah. And you mentioned restaurants, right? So some restaurants are having to transition to fully takeout or, you know, maybe they're transitioning completely to a community kitchen and all they're doing is takeout going forward and they're getting rid of their dining rooms completely. So, you know, I, I think we're seeing major, major shifts now, but we should always be doing minor shifts as time goes on with our business and marketing plans. Sure. And, and this is really, this, the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to future business planning. Um, and what I think is when you look at financial advisors like ourselves, so we own businesses. And so we think about how we market to, to, you know, whether we use LinkedIn or whether we use email marketing or whatever that is, but to also be able to have an expertise or somewhat of a, an idea of how to market those other businesses because business owners need help in their financial planning, but they're also going to need help in the way that they operate their business because they're, you know, so when you look at, even what the airlines have done, right? I think uh, Singapore Airlines is now, you can fly around and eat dinner on a plane. Not that I enjoy plane food and I want to fly around on it, but, <laughs> you know, they had to do what they had to do to get, you know, you know um, and like the, the baseball parks and, you know, the baseball teams that can't get guys in the seat. So, you know, what, what, do, what can we offer to them as a way to generate additional revenue through, you know, whether it be TV or whether it be merchandise or whatever, those, all those little tidbits that we can offer to our business owners to say, hey, listen, let's not talk about financial planning right now. Let's talk about growing this business during a time when we can take advantage of some opportunities that are given to us. Yeah. And so, I mean, that leads right into the next question that we have for you is, is how have you managed to really navigate this success throughout the pandemic, right? Because there are, and, and we've even felt this a little bit, there are a lot of businesses that are, that are really, really suffering out there, right? Sure. And we've found ways to thrive during this pandemic. You've clearly found ways to thrive through, through this pandemic, but how is it that you're navigating that on a day-to-day -day basis with your team? You know, I study the numbers. I think people forget that in business. You know, one thing, when, when your folio started, we had to raise investor capital. You know, we had to do all the things that you would watch. And uh, I think the best show to describe a startup is a show that was on HBO called Silicon Valley. Well, it was done by Mike Judge and it was absolutely hilarious. It is right on when it comes to how a startup is. And, you know, we've gone through all those ebbs and flows from raising capital to not sure if we're going to make payroll to all of those things to getting to a point where you get to cash flow break even and then cash flow positive, right? But the mistake is not knowing your numbers in business. And when the pandemic came, understanding your cash flow, understand where money's going out and what you need to adjust and, and make right is, is, is the, the base of your business. And so the way we survived was is we analyzed the numbers. You know, we had to look at it and we wanted to say, okay, listen, what are the things where well, we save money not going to conferences, right? So where can we deploy that money? We, you know, there's a payroll protection act. Do we need it? Can other businesses use it that we can help? Um, you know, there's an I, I, EIDL loans. Can we help people get those? You know, do we need those ourselves? You know, do we need to spend money on, you know, two or three different email marketing systems or, or all, the, you know, everything in cash flow and the numbers is, is what, what we needed to do to get through the pandemic was understanding our numbers. It's a numbers game. 
Yeah, we, we talk about that with our business owner clients all the time. If you don't know your numbers, then you don't, you don't truly know your business, right? No. And, and then the other thing that we're seeing right now, and I just had a conversation on uh, maybe Thursday or Friday, I'm part of a Vistage group and, and we were talking about specifically, you know, some, one of the members of our group um, seeing a drop in sales and being concerned about the future and, you know, what, what do we need to do? How do we shift? And, and those sorts of things. And, you know, part of the conversation was that so many business owners in this type of an environment, and, and again, this is an extreme example, but in this type of an environment, they kind of, you know, protect what they have and, 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 you know, try to huddle up or try to, you know, hold on to what they have instead of realizing that this is actually an opportunity if done right to double down on some of the marketing efforts that you have to really grow the business and come out of here on a much bigger slope. Yep. You know, a perfect example of that is, you know, when I talked about the Singapore airlines, but one of the things we did at Yuri Folio is we actually built in a, um, an insurance um, ga a gateway for insurance so that what would happen is, is that you could use our tools to market to prospects and it would, they could buy insurance right through our platform for us it was additional revenue for the client who had, you know, death and dying on their mind or COVID on their mind. It was a way for them to be able to make sure that they had the right insurance at the time when they needed it the most and an easy way to get it. So it was for us, it was an opportunity. It was a way to increase our business bottom line. I saw that opportunity. We took advantage of it, but in, at the end game, it's what you can do, ans you know, ancillarily to be able to build different revenue lines, you know, how, how you know, again, evolve, Look at what the, what the you know, and, and you're looking at, right, businesses that are going out of business. So what can you do to, to squeak into those, um, to grab their market share that they've lost? Um, you know, whatever that is. And so you can't be tight. I think Warren Buffett said it right. Um, you know, when everybody is, uh, has fear, you run to it. And I think when everybody's greedy, you, you, you run away. So um, yep. I think that was a poor job of representing what he said, but I think everybody <laughs> gets the point. But, you know, this is the time when we coach our business owners to say, listen, if there is an opportunity here, as much as you don't want to see it, there is an opportunity here and you should take advantage of it. Yep. Hey, Scott, can you, um, you know, I, I think we, we mentioned, you know, just chatting before the show that, um, you know, when it comes to new clients, Austin and I are exclusively focused on serving private business owners. Most of our clients are private business owners. Can you talk for a minute about, um, what you have been seeing in that space in regards to your software? I mean, what are, what are, what are business owners thinking about? What are they concerned about? What are they focused on right now in regards to estate planning? You know, uh, now that a lot of thoughts and feelings have been accelerated kind of due to the pandemic, are you seeing any trends there that maybe, are worth sharing with us? Yeah, we've seen an uptick from family offices, ironically, um, in requests for our software. Uh, I think a lot of, uh, you know, high net and ultra high net worth people want to get their stuff together, um, do a little better job of tracking it. So we've seen a little bit of uptick in that. But we've had a lot of calls from individuals just on our, our main line asking if they can use our software, which again, we don't, you know, we, we push that business back out to our subscribers, but more, hey, listen, I just want to organize my stuff online. I just want to make sure my family can know something happens to me where to get it. We've seen that kind of up, you know, uptick in there. But as far as the business owners go, like, you know, maybe the small business or medium sized business owners, there's a couple of things that they, you know, that have moved them, not so much the COVID now related, but of unfortunately the election and what they, what the changes that might hit them, um, there was a Secure Act that hit in January, but more importantly, what may or may not hit them uh, going into the new year if there are some changes. And so preparing for those changes now as a business owner, um, you know, for tax purposes, for protection purposes, for all of those things that, that estate planning for, um, that provides that people don't realize that business owners take advantage of. I think that's really the movement we're seeing more is moving towards that Um you know, the political environment that may change here and, and um, may or may not change, um, you know, moving forward, but you have to be prepared for it. Um, and so I think estate planning provides a lot of opportunities for them, a lot of protections, um, a lot of things that they can take advantage of now that no matter what happens, 
um, on November, I can't think of it's third or eighth or whenever sure. the election is, um, you know, whatever happens on the fourth or the, um, you know, they'll be prepared for it by taking advantage of it now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing that Austin and I really focus on in our practices is, is being, being proactive, right? Because, a lot of times business owners are so focused on running their businesses that other important stuff in their life, you know, falls by the wayside. Right. And, um, I love the fact that your software essentially provides a, a platform for advisors to be proactive with their clients because by being proactive and, and identifying and having discussions around things that may potentially change, it just, it gives you flexibility and it gives you options where if you don't do the planning up front, all of a sudden something unexpected happens and now you don't have flexibility, your options are extremely limited because you're forced into a, you know, quote, you know, air quotes here, a fire sale type of, of situation because whatever happens or, you know, has, has happened. So it, you know, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, but I love that your software really just provides a platform to, um, to be proactive so that you can address things before they, you know, potentially come up. Yeah, thank you. One of the things that we built in our software is a stress test. So you can stress test your current estate plan and see how it would hold up if something happened to you. And more importantly, if you don't have an estate plan, it shows you what stress level your family would have to go through with what you've left them with. So that tool alone, which is our most popular tool, is a great tool to be able to show people what their estate plan looks like or what it would look like without their estate plan. Uh, and it's a great little conversation piece a great little piece to bring to your clients to say, hey, we're going to review an estate plan. I want to walk you through a stress test or to a prospect to say, hey, let's see what would happen with you if you weren't here tomorrow. Uh, it's an eye opener. Um, and it, uh, it's a really, really powerful tool in motivating people and helping people understand where they're at and what they can do, you know, what their family would be left with if they weren't here. Yeah. You know, what, not just business owners, but, but all of us, right? You know, what, what some of us don't realize is that everybody has an estate plan. It just may or may not be what it, you know, what they would like it to do and say and, and, and feel like, because as we know, especially successful private business owners, uh, I mean, Scott, as you probably are, well, you probably know even better than Austin and I, you know, you see a, a successful private business owner and everybody thinks, oh, this guy or gal, you know, they, they've got it all taken care of. You know, they've got the, you know, their business is doing great. They've got it, you know, their multiple houses and they got their fancy cars and they, oh, they, they've got it all taken care of. But what the reality is, is, is they don't, right. Mm -hmm. You know, we meet with successful private business owners all the time and they don't even have a will or if they do, it's 10, 20, 30 years old sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's, uh, anyway, it's just, it's interesting to, to see that. And you probably see that all the time. Sure. I mean, they say 60% of adults don't have a, um, a, a will. And I think they say that of those 40% that do, 20% of them is it's 10 years or, or, or older. So um, I don't make up those statistics. I find them on the internet somewhere. I don't know if they're made up on the internet, but I'll use them, I'll use them for what they're worth, right? So, uh, but, you know, that that is the reality of it, um, is that um, a lot of people don't revisit it enough. They think it's a legal document and it's good forever and it needs to be revisited. And especially all these business owners that own, own a lot of stuff, you know, they don't use their estate plan as a, a tactic. They use it as just a... a a means to an end, you know, uh, I'm done. So let somebody else figure out the mess. Um, but the really, the reality of it is um, an estate plan for business owners is an advantage. It's a tool that they need to all use, no matter what level their business is at, uh, that can really protect things. I mean, 
you know, a simple part of that is, is, is if you have a business, you have a liability out there. So you can obviously protect assets by putting them in certain types of trust to protect yourself from liability. So there's a lot to it. Um, and I think that maybe some advisors don't tackle it as much because maybe they don't understand all the advantages to it. But the guys that do are the guys you'll see that'll, that'll have, uh, you know, the higher net worth, the ultra high net worth clients, and, and, and they'll be able to bring those advantages and differentiate themselves and bring a different edge to their, uh, to their, to their prospects and their clients. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we had a guy on our show, I don't know, a month or two ago. He's a pretty well-known business, you know, small business kind of guru author. His name is Mike McCallowitz. And uh, Mike, um, his mission is to uh, eliminate entrepreneurial poverty. <laughs> so it kind of sounds like your mission is to, uh, I don't know how to say this correctly, but, you know, to eliminate the woes of, you know, not having a, a proper estate plan. Is that kind of a fair fair thing to say? I wouldn't say, uh, I, I don't know if I want to eliminate how having a, I, what I want to do is empower advisors to be more of, to be more engaged with somebody's estate plan. So, uh, but I certainly like his, uh, his theory of, of making sure that, uh, Entrepreneurs like myself and yourselves are, are not poor, uh, which uh, we have an advantage because, uh, you know, we have established businesses. So Yuri Folio, if I did it on its own, I'd be poor right now. But, uh, but you know, that's, that's the end game, right? So, you know, you hear about all these big sales of $2 billion companies, these technology sales and, and people making, uh, you know, all this money. And uh, the reality is, I think, you know, 98% of them fail and only 2% make it out at the other end. And sometimes when they make it out, you don't know how it turns out for the owner. They may have been squeezed down their, their, their valuations, you know, whatever that would be their cap sheets and squeeze them down. So um, it's great to read about all the wonderful stories, but there are 98 more of them or 98% of them that don't turn out as good. So uh, I hope this guy makes his mission. I hope all the entrepreneurs are no longer poor and, uh, and we all make a billion bucks, but uh, it's, it's certainly a chance. I mean, we, we all, you guys included are taking a chance. It's easy to go up and work for somebody else. It's harder to do it on your own. Like you guys have done. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I think what you're doing to, like you said, empowering advisors to have this conversation on an easier basis than they have been with their current clients or with new clients. Right. You know, I, I remember when the estate tax exemption was raised and I'm in a room with other very successful advisors and a few of them said, well, estate planning's dead. And I thought, what? How long have you been doing this? You have no idea what estate planning is if you're saying that estate planning is dead just because the estate tax exemption went up, right? Yeah. There's so much more to estate planning. It's not just about transitioning wealth and you know, selling a life insurance policy to pay estate taxes. There's way more to estate planning than that. But it was, it was just uh, dumbfounding to hear so many advisors in the room, successful advisors, long-term advisors that just didn't fully understand what estate planning was and how to, to deploy it with their, with their uh, clients. I had to, uh, that brings me into a funny story because, uh, you know, if you ask yourself how many families fight over an estate, right? you know, when, when both parents, you know, they have, they're left over and the kids don't get along and they fight. Um, somebody had said to me, boy, it'd be nice. Uh, or well, I'm sorry. One of my, one of the, my clients said, don't worry. My son will take the couch and the TV. And then, you know, we talked to the son and then he's like, I don't want the couch and the TV. I, I don't know why my parents think that. So what we actually did is we, we built a, what we call a gamification module in our software. So it's sent out ahead of time to the beneficiaries and they get a list of all the items in the estate and what they want to participate in. So how many of your clients say, oh, I want my oldest son to be the executor or I want my oldest son to be my healthcare power attorney. The oldest son, he doesn't even know what's going on. He just got elected to be one, right? Yeah. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't it know ahead of time if you wanted to actually be the executor? So this module goes out confidentially to each kid and they get to pick and choose how they want to participate in either the estate and what they'd like to be. I'd like to keep the business. I'd like to keep the Ferrari. You know, I could care less about the couch. Um, and they get to, and then it, the information comes back to the planner and the people and they get to read it and say, Oh, I thought they wanted the couch. No, I guess they don't. So, uh, but <laughs> the way to head things off of the past, it's actually a really neat little module. We call it our beneficiary engagement module, a gamification module. So, uh, but it's good. It's a good way to get those next generation involved in the estate plan because how many people do, you know, not many. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. And at the end of the day, it's about, it's about preserving family harmony, right? And that sort of thing can, 
can actually help accomplish that. Cause yeah. I'm, I mean, like I said, seven kids on my wife's side of the family and you know, they've started talking about um, kind of a, a bidding system or, you know, everybody <laughs> gets a certain amount of fake money, so to speak. And if there's something you really, really want, then you have to bid for it. Um, you know, like there's a grand piano and then there's these Yadro dolls and there's, you know, these different things. M Mom has, you know, a certain number of pieces of jewelry and, and, and there's six daughters and one son, right? Yeah. So, I, I'm sure the son doesn't really care about the jewelry, except that he has a wife that maybe does care about the jewelry. And so it, you know, it's just, it's these conversations that need to have happen. And it sounds like your software makes them easier to happen. This would make their, this would, this tool would make that, that whole, that whole, uh, that whole conversation just kind of subside because they'd be able to figure it out with this tool, but it'd be fun. So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, they'll have to check it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I look, yeah, I look forward to checking it out and, and learning more about it and obviously staying in touch over the years, but yeah, Landon, you want to bring us home and close out the show? I would, I, I would, I would be honored. I'd be honored. Yeah. Sorry. So, we talked about death and dying the whole time. I didn't. Probably the, the, yeah, the, but we, we did, but we, we talked about the positive things that you can focus on around, you know, maybe not a, a super positive topic. So we, we sure appreciate that Scott. So um, one thing that I will add here before we, uh, uh, before you can tell us how to track you down. Uh, so you mentioned, uh, you know, what uh, I, I think a lot of uh, the media refers to as unicorns, right? So these companies that start up and, you know, are bought and sold for, you know, a couple billion dollars. So uh, we, we hope and wish the unicorn status upon you, yeah. Scott. Sounds like, <laughs> you know, you've got something really special and, and unique here. So we, we clearly, uh, we're, we're rooting for you. We wish you all the success, but we got to ask you, what, what is the end game as it stands today for your eFolio? Yeah, I, I would be lying if I told you it wasn't that. Uh, it certainly would be to, uh, to be acquired by a, uh, a very large company for a very large amount where I can go sit on the beach for the rest of my life and uh, maybe become a philanthropist, give back a little bit, uh, maybe mentor a little bit, uh, all of those wonderful things that come with the retired life. But uh, yes, in the end, uh, obviously some big, uh, some big sale would always, uh, would always be nice, but I'm not there yet. I got a, I got a little bit of a way to go. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Well, Scott, this has been a really, really, informative, uh, really enjoyable interview. And Austin and I are excited to dive deeper into the software so that we can better understand how we might utilize it to serve our clients. But um, there's probably going to be some people that want to get some additional information on the software. Maybe they want to, you know, connect with you uh, individually. And what, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, um, easy. Our software is called Your eFolio. It's Your eFolio. So uh, it's www.yourefolio.com and uh, you can view um, anything that you'd like uh, about our, our software there. It needs to be updated a little bit, but it's pretty close. And uh, my email is very easy to get a hold of me. It's scott at yourefolio.com. So uh, anybody uh, needs to connect or has any questions or, uh, or, or would like to check it out, feel free to send me an email anytime. Fantastic. Scott, really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you guys. And uh, you are definitely somebody that we would like to have on, you know, maybe uh, second or third quarter of next year so that we can uh, get an update on what you're up to. Thank you. I'd, I'd be honored. I, I appreciate the opportunity. If I could repay the favor, I certainly would. And thank you so much for, uh, for, for letting me uh, jump on with you guys. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks a lot, Scott. Thanks. And who knows, I may be sitting, you know, parked in front of your house in the RV, getting ready to go to an Indians game after the next time we <laughs> record together. So. We, would we would love to have you in Cleveland. Please join us. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Scott. Thanks, Scott. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. 
Join Austin Landon and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform. All right. Good job, Karen. <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Waiting, waiting for her to sell us. We were clear, but I think we're good. We are clear. Could you not hear the ending? Oh, yeah, we could. Oh, yeah, we could. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why my name is up there. You know, I do so many coaching calls, and I've been pretty good about switching between Karen and Phoenix Business Radio X, but today I missed that. Sorry about that. Oh. Uh, I'm going to leave the video on just so I can take a couple of photos of you, and then I'll let you guys have a chance to just kind of revel in the great conversation and opportunity to say goodbye. So if you could just smile for a moment, and I'll take a couple of shots. Here we go. Smiling. One more. Wonderful. I'll take us off video record.